What's up, Foot Clan? We got a great show for you today. Make sure you tune in. We got some buy sell. We're going to talk about uh, Jameis Winston. What do we expect in the buy sell? And then we're going to jump right into more wide receivers, numbers 11 through 20 on our rankings. You don't want to miss it. Some very interesting debates, including some hot locket action. Don't miss it. Hey, Foot Clan, today's episode is brought to you by ADT. Real protection from ADT is personalized, smart home security with a system that fits your unique needs and safeguards your home with a rapid connection to first responders 24-7. Take ADT peace of mind with you on the go with the ADT Go app, features location sharing, safe driving reports, and emergency SOS. That's real protection. That's ADT. To learn more, visit ADT.com slash podcast. Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Oh, welcome in. Much better, Andy. Oh, Much better. The plane came in for the landing. I wasn't sure, but it worked out. Welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Wednesday, August 7th. I know for uh, for Mike's family and my own, it's the first day of school. It is. Foot Clan, thank you so much for your patience. The show's out a l- just a little bit later today because I had to drop off my little baby. My baby boy. He's all grown up Ooh. going to kindergarten. Yeah, my daughter started today, too. Slackers. Hard to comprehend. We are old, Mike. I, I was old. Not old. Still old. Am old and was a very weepy man. Yeah. This morning. Yeah. Um, with with our boys going to school, they were really resistant. They were, you know, grab, grab us. Don't were get they? out of the car. Uh, my daughter was like, peace out. Like she, <laughs> she didn't look back. She just basically had her big brothers with her. It was, it was fun. So, um, but yeah, we've got a great show for you today. Getting into the wide receiver rankings. The second half, we did the top 10 yesterday. It was a good show. Very interesting. It was a great show. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but these are some of the, the names we get to bring up today. More discussion, more debate. Uh, different beliefs about what they're doing. We're also going to be bringing you a brand new... Um, on Wednesdays, our quick question is going to be a little different. We've got a, a, a little mini segment, some buy-sell stuff we're going to do on Wednesdays. And uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, a couple other reminders. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We appreciate you subscribing, reviewing the show. You can listen on Apple Podcasts. You can listen over on... Uh, Spotify, on Google uh, Google Podcasts. You can listen on Stitcher. I thought you were going to go with Google Maps. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can tune in on Google Maps. We just <laughs> distributed the pod over to the... Uh, <laughs> It's only on the street. You have to find it. It's only on the street view, Mike. It's geolocated. Yeah, you actually have to find a little (laughs) boombox that we placed around on Google Maps and you can press play. Um, And then the Ultimate Draft Kit's available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Get ready for your league. Get ready to dominate in 2019. The season's coming quick. Um, Let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Buy or Sell. If Jameis Winston starts 16 games, he will beat his career highs, his career season high of 28 passing touchdowns. 16 games of healthy Jameis Winston. Will he he throw for, let's say this, more than 28 touchdowns? Mm, His 16-game pace last year was... In fact, 28 touchdowns. Ooh, so buy. This is, oh, what a question. Buy or sell? I'm buying. I, I believe he will beat it, and I'm not buying that on the basis of Jameis so much as the basis of O.J. Howard and Chris Godwin being really great touchdown threats opposite Mike Evans. He's got the tools, the weapons, the offensive coordinator uh, as a head coach uh, calling the plays. I, I believe that Jameis Winston will beat it if he plays 16. Uh, I will. I like the way it's worded. Start sixteen games. I'm not banking on injury, but other things can go wrong for Jameis. I Fair. will. I will buy. I will buy that. Uh, no, every quarterback that Bruce Arians touches, their average 
depth of target uh, is their career high. So he's going to be throwing the ball down the field. They did lose 179 targets with Humphreys leaving town, Deshaun Jackson. It's okay. Oh, Jay Howard's got this. They got Brashad Perryman. So we're good. Uh, So I'm buying. Mike, what are you doing? Uh, For 16, I will buy over 28. I mean, what do these shares cost? Uh, What are we going at right here? Are we at like $1.50? I think you'd have to look at Jameis' ADP to to figure out what it costs to go in on him. If he plays 16, he will beat his ADP. Which is the middle of the 10th round. Yes. Okay. All right, buy or sell, number two. Kyler Murray will live up to his current draft cost, which is the eighth round, the QB eight now. The hype is real for Kyler Murray. Buy or sell, QB eight? I'm going to sell. I buy the hype. Boo. I know, I know. Uh, I buy the hype. I think Kyler is going to be great. But for him to be in the top eight quarterbacks, that's not just an anti Kyler thing. That's saying, okay, he's gonna probably be beating Baker or some some guys that right now are slated ahead of him um in order to stay in the top eight. At, regardless, let's say he does let's say he is the quarterback eight. He does not I would not draft that in the eighth round. Well I'm not spending an eighth round pick on the quarterback eight when I can spend a eleventh a or twelfth round pick uh, on someone I could stream the position. I mean, we uh, a couple of years ago we tracked our streaming for those out that are that are newer. We make a weekly streaming pick every week, and our average uh, quarterback weekly finish was the quarterback six playing off of the waiver wire. So yeah, an eighth round pick to get the eighth quarterback is not value. Uh, Cam Newton, Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, Jameis Winston, Lamar Jackson, all going behind, behind Kyler Murray. I'll sell it as well. That doesn't mean yeah. I don't think that the range of outcomes for Murray is a top five finish, but it, look, you're talking about a rookie coming into the NFL, growing pains, I mean, maybe I, physical pains. I mean, he's going to run the football, and in the NFL, yeah. that could be enough right, to wait, knock you out of that going top on eight. Here? What's just, going on here, Jay? I, just, I, I think there's a – like, I know I sold, but there's there's probably a pretty good chance he's the number one quarterback in the NFL this year. Right, guys? <laughs> Um, yes. Like the best of all time. Did you remember you were a Cardinals fan just I now? Just, just did. now. The margin for error at the QB8 is just, it's too high for me. Or, or uh, So you're selling as well? Yeah, I have to sell, even though I have him finishing right around there. All right, we'll do one more, then we'll jump into the news. Lamar Jackson, 25 total touchdowns on the season. Oh, my. 25 total touchdowns, buy or sell? I'm going to have to go with. What I statted out, I have him with 19 passing touchdowns and six rushing touchdowns. Oh, that's a push. So I am a – Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm that's a buy. A buy. Yeah, I'm that's a, buy. a buy. I believe he has 25 uh, all-purpose touchdowns this season. I guess that means I'm a sell. I have him statted for as 16 I. passing touchdowns and six rushing, which would not get it done. I'm a sell as well. All right, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. We're going to do that each and every Wednesday – Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, I I tweeted something this morning that people didn't like very much. I think 49ers fans more than anybody. And uh, look, I could could be wrong. That's the the nature of projections. You tweeted about the 49ers. Yeah. And it wasn't just Matt Burita gifts. No, but in a roundabout way, all of my tweets are compliments of Matt Burita. Uh, the 49ers activated Jarek McKinnon from the active PUP. If you listen to things around camp, he was off to the side doing some individual drills. I tweeted out that I believe that Jarek McKinnon does not factor into the plans for the 49ers this year in by way of like he's not going to be one of the top three producers in fantasy at the position on their team. So It's I, so interesting. So you have the colonel. You have Raheem... Mostert Actually, ahead of him. Moster or Jeff Wilson. Right now, Jeff Wilson is, is ahead of him and, and showing well in camp um, in terms of the, the kind of first swing at the depth chart. Wilson's ahead of Mostert. Mostert got some cash, I think. Um, but, yeah, Coleman, Brita, and a third, a third body. I just – look, people want to believe the narrative that this was a hand-picked Kyle Shanahan player, and so he's going to get his opportunity. Things change in the NFL, and obviously we've seen – a, a head coach pivot, right? It, it, he didn't have enough confidence to 
you know, in this stable of running backs, not go after Tevin Coleman when the opportunity presented itself. And sometimes players get hurt and you change your plans as a head coach and as a franchise. I just think it's uh, the journey to McKinnon being fantasy relevant is more difficult than people think it is. Um, what do you guys think about that? I would people say, did not like that take, by the way. I would say it's a hot take to say he wouldn't be one of the top three running backs on San Francisco. Yeah, I agree with you that plans do change, but he was a hand chosen running back by Kyle Shanahan, and through no fault of Jarek McKinnon, I mean, he was ready by all accounts to be the main guy for San Francisco last year. Tore his ACL right before the season started. That's not I mean, Jarek doesn't have control of that. So as long as he is working, it the plans may have shifted that they're bringing in more backup options, but it would be it would be strange to me. If Kyle Shanahan gave Jarek and, and company, not just Shanahan, obviously, but if they brought in Jarek McKinnon, gave him a, a lot of money for a running back, then he gets hurt and they go, wow, this guy's a bum. He can't play. I mean, you you just paid him and brought him in and you haven't had a chance to see if he is a bum or not. So I think he will still receive plenty of chances and will be in the top three of there, the team yeah and and you could be absolutely right it was a lot of money spent I think they could cut him I think that's a possibility I uh, I also think that sometimes you handpick guys bring them in and you don't see what you want after an injury Cameron Meredith last year never materialized as a wide receiver for the Saints they brought him in they wanted to see what he had at this point in time you certainly don't do yourself any favors as an organization playing a guy that you paid previously if they're not up to snuff. And a lot of that has to yeah, do agreed. with the fact that he is recovering from this, had a setback, had a flare-up. If he was, you know, if, if all the reports over the last four months was, oh my gosh, this guy looks ready to rumble, I wouldn't believe that. Right, but it's been the exact opposite. The fact that he had his knee swell up again says to me that there's no way he's going to enter. Like, he's not going to come back in and once he's approved for team drills, okay, you're at the front of the line. He's starting now at the back of at least those three. But he definitely has a shortcut pass in his back pocket. I don't know that the money is... No, it, I'm not even just talking about the... It's not just the money. It's They saw something in Jarek McKinnon, and they brought him in. I mean, right, he, but that was before and they then he saw tore his what, ACL. <laughs> but that was before they brought in Tevin Coleman and before they saw what I'm they saying, had in Burita. Yeah. I'm saying to skip ahead of, of Colonel Mustard sure. and Jeff oh, Wilson. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. all I mean. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Damian Williams, Mike, he returned, oh! he returned to practice. Oh! I feel like Damian Williams had such. Uh, Mike is. is are you re relieved over yes. there? Yes. Is that, that sounded more like you're being uh, cut open? <laughs> I, birthed by a hippo. I don't know what that was, but here's the thing. That Damian, was the sound of relief. Sweet relief at that. Damian Williams returns to practice. Thank there was some goodness. negative, uh, you know, some pressure put on by Andy Reid. I hope he returned with an okay hamstring. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, but he he he'll, he'll get some uh, he'll get the first team reps again. John Gruden said that the team, the Raiders, they are gathering information. <laughs> that was, was the it? hard the the hard knocks. Give me the hard knocks horn. You you give, give it to me, <laughs> no, Mike. I need I, it. No, I can't. I have to let you sit on that <laughs> island of that weird horn melody you just played. <laughs> what was that? From give, a distance. <laughs> It was much more adult contemporary than the Hard Knocks theme song. I Look, right now, the, the report yesterday, according to Chris Sims, was that Antonio Brown, the foot issue he's dealing with, and if you watched Hard Knocks last night, you watched him try to walk. It was a hard walk last night for Antonio Brown. Um, they say he entered a cryotherapy yes. machine without the proper footwear on. What? I don't need those. I mean, and now he's paying the price with potentially frostbitten feet. That is speculation. That is not okay. An that's not team confirmed. Report. It's not confirmed by uh, the team. No, Gruden won't comment about it. Gruden's frustrated not having him on the field. But that being said, he's seen a specialist. He's considered day to day, and I think we probably won't so, be talking about so visiting Mister Freeze. I wasn't sure what reference you wanted to go with there, Mike. Um, Matty Ice has competition now. Oh, but uh, yeah, if you're the head coach of the Raiders. And your superstar player has gone into a cryotherapy machine and received a level of frostbite on his feet. Of course you cannot comment on it. <laughs> you cannot let that ever get out into the public as confirmation. Well, it definitely seemed like if you watch Hard Knocks, 
and that was filmed, you know, th literally earlier, uh, th I think, last week, you could tell that Gruden didn't know. He was not intimately familiar with even the timeline for recovery with Antonio Brown. He was just asking, like, do we have him today? Is he ready? And and he clearly was not. Um, and so it, it it's really – that, that was just so interesting to me when I was watching, going like, wait, how does he not know exactly what's going on with Antonio Brown? I bet that happens all the time with coaches. They don't, they don't know if – I guy... thought you meant the cryotherapy uh, machine. No, no, no. Like, no, we should no, get out of that. No, no, but I, I've, I imagine that the coach has so much on his plate. That's why he has the training staff. And he goes, do I have Brown today? No? Okay. And then that, when you say no five times, you get real frustrated. Yes. Especially when you invested oh, the future of yes. your franchise. Um, so we'll, we'll monitor that right now. There's no indication that he won't be ready for week one, but that can change. I mean, this could take longer than we think. And then, uh, I do want to bring up a name we haven't brought up before. Uh, Darren Waller, who around the office, you know, he's yeah. known as the Walrus. I am the Walrus <laughs> because that's, this is the fantasy. Because that's what we because do. Because this is the fantasy footballers. So the Walrus himself... <laughs> Oh man, Andy <laughs> Reid jokes flooding my mind. Um, it's a masterpiece. Really. I'm bringing his name up, and I a couple weeks ago I adjusted him in the ultimate draft kit. Uh, Darren Waller is the Raiders' starting tight end. Returned to practice. He has been flashing in camp. If you listen to what Gruden talks about, he's talked a lot about Tyrell Williams looking great. He's talked about Darren Waller looking great. He's a hyper athlete, and he's worth mentioning because. Sometimes you can't change quarterbacks from what they are. So if you believe that Derek Carr isn't going to be willing to drive the ball down the field, even with the weapons that he has, you saw what he did with a, an athletic tight end last year with Jared Cook, which was to make him hyper-relevant. All that to say, Waller's at like 19 or 20 on my tight end rankings right now. But he does have an opportunity there, and I think if, he should be brought up in an in, in up-and-coming tight end category. Yeah, he, he's tied to Antonio Brown to me. If Antonio Brown really struggles to get his feet right and, and to be the player that we know he is, or if he misses time you know, unexpectedly, then Waller could very well end up being the number one target the same way that Cook is. And every, every beat reporter that's out at camp has just been – Talking about Waller torching everybody in any kind of one-on-one -on -one drills. He's he's been dominant. He's a converted wide receiver to tight end, so he's very good at the pass catching role. Also, for what it's worth, could probably handle the cold better being a uh, yeah. a, yes. walrus. a walrus. And a fun fact from his Wikipedia page: apparently, he is the great grandson of jazz legend Fats Waller. Yes. <laughs> well, now, <laughs> great. Yes. Um, Quincy and Nunra exited. Tuesday's practice with a groin injury. Ah! They say prob <laughs> probably day to day. Uh, oh, I want to get in on this. Um, <laughs> of course, of course you do. You guys can bring any of your stuff forward with your if my they, guys. They, they, they talk. We had this exact same hype piece in. We didn't bring it up, but yesterday's show had the exact same hype piece about Jordan Howard, and yeah, you, we true. bypassed it. Chris but Carson. There's a difference. The Seattle. <laughs> Seahawks want to get Chris Carson and Rashad Penny more involved in the passing game. Brian Schottenheimer came out and said, look, he has – I don't remember the, the word he used, um, but he said he had incredible hands. I think there's a better word, but Bo I mean – Both of them. Uh, both of them are very good pass catchers. That's the difference between Jordan Howard, you know, getting the fluff piece on being more involved in the passing game. We know Jordan Howard tried and tried and tried. He's not a pass catcher back, not going to – succeed in that role but both Chris Carson and Rashad Penny are talented pass catchers that have not been utilized in that role so if they're seeing from camp that the that they're trying to make a concerted effort to get their backs the ball through the air which would be very smart for the Seahawks yes it would and then you factor in that you lost Mike Davis who kind of was the guy in that role when when it was needed for Seattle last year both Chris Carson and Rashad Penny could get a bump up here if there's more targets going to the running back it's, than we expect. Yeah, it's funny when like Sonny Michelle and Carson, some of these guys that you don't prototypically think of as pass catchers, get some buzz around here because that's what translates you into a break, you know, the next tier yes. of running back. And uh, no Doug Baldwin, you know, this passing game is still materializing. So uh, that was today's news and notes. A reminder, Sleeper does not just break the latest fantasy news. They're also the best fantasy football platform Download the app today. And before we move into our wide receiver rankings, want to thank today's sponsor, Away. 
Away offers high-quality luggage at a much lower price by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you. You can choose from nine colors and four sizes, a carry-on, the bigger carry-on, and no, Jason, not that carry-on. They're both great. <laughs> and both carry-ons from Away are compliant with all major U.S. airlines, so you can bring them on. You got 360-degree spinner wheels. They guarantee a smooth ride. We all have an Away bag. We, you know we've been traveling a lot. My Away bag always comes with me. It's You can get one with a battery in there and charge up all your devices. Know that you're never going to run out, run out of juice. There's a lifetime warranty. If anything breaks, Away will fix it or replace it. You can try it for 100 days, and if at any point you don't, it's not for you, you can return it for a full refund. But guess what? It's going to be for you. I love my Away bag. For $20 off a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash footballers20. Use our promo code footballers20 during checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash footballers20. Use the promo code footballers20 for 20 bucks off a suitcase. Wide receivers. All right, we'll see how far we get today. The second wide receiver ranking show. Yesterday we did one through ten. We're going to kick it off right here, right now. Number eleven, Adam Thielen. Yes. All right, his current average draft position is three hundred four. That's the wide receiver eleven, right where we have him ranked. Uh, I got him at fifteen. Jason ten. Mike twelve. Last year. My goodness. I mean, he finished the season as the wide receiver seven the year before wide receiver 10. It was a tale of two halves weeks one through nine. There was really nobody more consistent, more dominant than Adam Thielen. He was a super Saiyan. It was outrageous what he was doing in the first half. Yeah. uh, Had all the power ups, all the cheat (laughs) codes over the second and a half of the year. You really only had like uh, one big game in week 12. Otherwise, look, 12 points, 11, 10, 2, 10, 5. Uh, We, you know, blur our eyes to not look at those numbers over the second half when we're trying to figure out what he's going to do this upcoming year. He ran 46% of his routes from the slot. Kirk Cousins, Stephon Diggs, how comfortable would you be having Adam Thielen as your wide receiver one uh, on your fantasy roster? I would say the comfort level, it's it's not. Is it two-ply? No, it's more like it's not a big one. But like a small pebble in my shoe. Like, it's slightly uncomfortable, but I can certainly handle it. I can get through my day. You could ignore it. You could ignore it a little bit. I can ignore it. A small pebble? I can't ignore a small pebble. I don't have Antonio Brown all day. I don't have Antonio Brown feet. We're good to go. I can ignore it. I can live with it. The first eight games, he was a hundred plus yards, eight out of eight, ten plus targets, and seven out of eight of those games. And then the final eight games. Over 100 yards just twice, 10-plus targets twice, the wide receiver 30 in points per game. And what's really hard about both Adam Thielen and I guess we're jumping ahead a little bit to Diggs, it's – I'll allow it. it, It's it's going off of projection. You know that they're both studs. They're elite wide receivers, possibly the best wide receiver tandem in the NFL. But they also fired their offensive coordinator for throwing the ball too much. They're in a – They've brought in people who are very run centric, including Kubes, getting care that Gary Kubiak running scheme involved there. But you know that they're great, and they've been paid a lot of money. The second half definitely doesn't indicate what Adam Thielen is. I mean, that was, you know, sure it was too extreme. They they lost three, uh, or they only won three of those games in the second half of the season. They also played the Chicago Bears two times in that stretch, which eh, the Bears are pretty good. They do play them two times every year. They do, but they don't necessarily – I'm saying that that colors the numbers over that stretch of games to where, um, you know, it just gives you more of an extreme feeling about Thielen. I think he will be okay, obviously. Well, and, like, the first time they played the Bears, he received 12 targets. It wasn't wasn't a great game. It was still 7 for 66, but that final game – Four targets, and that's when that was after the offensive coordinator change had had been made. Not saying you can extrapolate from a three game sample of that OC, but it it's it should feel great to have Adam Thielen as your wide receiver one. It should be brand new socks in your brand uh, no, not even brand worn in shoes. Like it's comfy, but it's not. He was still, despite that stretch, the eighth most consistent fantasy wide receiver. 
Um, he was still hitting double digits in the majority of those games. He only had 13% bust rate. I'm okay with him as my one if I go running back, running back. I really am. I am. But it should feel better than it does. Yeah, I mean. I look, think it will on certain weeks. Look, I mean. The only ones I'll pay attention to. When people want to extrapolate the change of uh, coordinator and look at the games, you, Mike, you've brought up specifically how wacky some of those games were, the, the, the rushing totals that they had, and the, the fact that Adam Thielen wasn't necessarily needed in those games. But the reality is this. The last two seasons, he's been the number one target for Kirk Cousins, and he is, I believe firmly, the number one wide receiver paid as a number one wide receiver for an NFL team that is good. So, I mean, you, you I think sometimes we overcomplicate this, right? Like, yes. he had 153 targets last year. He only had 142 targets the year before. Maybe he drops down to about that level as as they pass the ball a little bit less. But two years ago, he was the wide receiver 10. Last year, he was the wide receiver 7. He's a wide receiver 1. Through the first nine weeks, he was the wide receiver 1. So, we, we we've seen the upside. He has the ability to do that. So I am con like to me, I feel like he is a a an a slightly different brand than Charmin Ultra. But it's still it's not just two play. It's not it's a sponsor. Nice, you not just, a sponsor. You just, just like saying, it on your bum bum. Right. Well, of course. Uh you know, I'm not a monster. But the point is I am comfortable with Adam Thielen as my one. I, I don't have a pebble in my foot feeling. I think he's going to be what he's been for fantasy the last couple of years, which is a really consistent, hyper-targeted player for a good offense. Um, number 12, Julian Edelman. If you had uh, made me list three players that my opinion was changing on, on yesterday's show, I went with Christian Kirk. Edelman's one of the guys that I've bumped down a little bit in my rankings a couple of times. Over the last week, I'm starting this out because I know I'm going to get the opposite argument from the two two guys uh, sitting next to me. I just do not believe that Julian Edelman is going to be able to do a, a handful of things. Number one, he's 33 years old. We're dealing with A.J. Green's age and recovery time. Julian Edelman is not a pinnacle of health. He rarely plays a full season. He struggled to do so. Uh, I am ranked at 17 for context. Jason at 12. Mike at 9. Uh, he's never finished above 16 on the course of a full season, and I just don't believe he's going to do it at 33. I am optimistic that he's going to be peppered with targets and a really, really good PPR target. But even in the incredible pace he had last year, which was about 100 receptions, uh, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns on 144 targets, that's the pace if you projected his whole season. Even with that, you didn't get any great games from Julian Edelman last year. He is a very PPR... Um, no touchdown guarantee type of player. And so I've moved him down a little bit, just believing that at the end of the season, he's not going to be in that top 12 category. And I, I don't mind the the take that by the end of the season, he won't be in the top 12. Because I agree, it's, it's hard to project that Julian Edelman is going to give you a full 16 games. But when he is playing, and let's say you only get 10 games, for it, for where is he being drafted currently? Uh, in the... Uh, 403. Four or three, wide the, receiver 15. A, the wide receiver 15 who will, in my opinion, you get those first 10 weeks, he will exceed wide receiver 15 for those 10 games. And that's, that's to me, enough. Enough draft value from him. And then knowing that if he goes the full 16, he's going to be great. Last year, once he was back from the suspension, he was the wide receiver 8. He was .3 points per game behind Michael Thomas. He was a half point per game Behind Juju Smith-Schuster, he was awesome last year. Very safe. I and mean, yes. as safe of a player as you can get. His target share is guaranteed in that offense. Yeah, it, it, his targets, historically without Gronk, he averages almost 11 targets a game. It, he's, his volume will be safe. Maybe he doesn't give you great games, but... He doesn't give you bad games. He doesn't give you bad games, exactly. And you know he can be a stabilizing force. Like, let's say you go in on Tyreek Hill early. Tyreek Hill was up for a top-end wide receiver. He busted more than the other guys, but his booms are boom, boom. You combine him with someone safer like Julian Edelman and just stabilize your wide receiver core, I, I'm in on Julian Edelman knowing that he definitely – it, not definitely, but it's, it's unlikely that he plays a full 16. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like you statted him, though, to be kind of at his ceiling. 
in terms of projection totals, right? You 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 I project him as yes. a healthy Julian. I Edelman. projected him for sixteen. Got it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I I echo what these two fine looking gentlemen have said. He it's is about time. He's extremely uh, consistent. He only had two games last year where he wasn't a wide receiver two or better. He always was either a, a back end wide receiver one or a high end wide receiver two week in week out. Ooh. And if you look at 2016 when you had a large chunk of missing Gronk game planned that way, not just like he mess, he, you know, he was out of the game. That's where Julian Edelman was, you know, 160 targets was clearly leading the way. He didn't have the touchdowns on that season. That's that was the issue. But we've seen Julian Edelman. We've seen him do it. Yeah, have a, a high rate of touchdowns too. So I, you know, do I think he's a ten touchdown guy? No. Can Tom Brady turn him into that if if, if the chips fall right? Sure. Uh, so I I I'm fine with him where he's going. I mean, he's going next to like Amari Cooper. I would much rather have the consistent play. Even if at the end of the year Cooper finishes a spot or two ahead of Julian Edelman for fantasy purposes in a in a in a league I would rather have the consistency of Edelman. My my last point I will make the contract extension for Julian Edelman it boosts my confidence. The the New England Patriots are notorious for when they believe a player is done they are done. He's they're moving on, but they clearly think that Edelman has has gas left in the tank. I would feel more comfortable with Adam Thielen than Edelman as my wide receiver one. What do you guys think? Me too. Uh, but well, it's a round difference, correct? Um, or sure. the, 403 to 303, yeah. Yeah, pretty, full mu round. pretty much. So, yeah. I would love those two guys. As yeah, my you're not drafting Edelman as a one unless you have gone running back, running back, running back. If you go running back. back, running back, you could probably have Thiel and Edelman as your next, and two, that would be as great. Your next two picks. Uh, Robert Woods comes in at number 13. Um, we don't have to linger too long here. Jason has made a robust Robert Woods. Um, what, would we, what would you uh, – A like love a sonnet? Poem. Like a – I mean, a soliloquy. Uh, no, but no. More from like a mm. rooftop or a... Nope. It's a defense. I made a <laughs> defense. I'm coming to the defense of Robert Woods because... <laughs> but you're defending him more against like like the air. You're defending like him he, against the straw he man. He finished 10th. Literally. And we both like him. So you're not defending him against I'm us. I'm defending him against the, the, the populace out there. Literally yesterday on Twitter, there was a big thread uh, from Calculator on just like... They don't believe in Robert Woods. That you know, they they just don't think he is capable of being I've, a yeah, one. You're searching these things out. To put no, it no, on, no. They put it on your bulletin board material for gets, these shows. Gets the Google alerts every time Robert, Robert Woods, Woods negative. Is, any negative Look, associated thing. The he, synopsis is this: I believe that Robert Woods <laughs> is a very good wide receiver. I believe he's the wide receiver one for one of the top three offenses in the league, and that he will be a top fifteen wide receiver. And he'll be extremely consistent along the way of doing that. If you want the details and all the stats and everything, go listen to the My Guys episode two episodes ago because uh, I go in depth. Yeah, and one thing brought up worth mentioning. Last year he had 157 rushing yards. That is, uh, There were only five wideouts that crossed 100 rushing yards. Cordero Patterson, DJ Moore, Robert Woods, Tyreek Hill, Julian Edelman. Um, that equates to about 2.6 touchdowns on top of his fantasy numbers. Uh, do you think he does that again? Just, yes. Mm. He, it, it, since he's been a Ram, he's been used in the in the running game well, uh, since McVay's been there. Uh, well, 2017, he had two carries. See? <laughs> <laughs> he did say been used. Okay. Um, Fair. Yeah, I, I, that's one of those things. I'm that, not counting on that. That's a pretty good uh, – those jump from year to year. Yeah. Because really, that's probably – Breaking a long play or not breaking a long play on one of your end rounds. A great part of drafting Robert Woods is I'm with Jason, wide receiver one for the Rams. But if he's the two or the three, it, he's still great. Well, you're saying different things, too, when, when you talk about the Rams wide receivers. It, that's there's that's not, my point. There's, there's the number one target. Then there's the one that receives the most targets. You're not necessarily – Trent Taylor in San Francisco could very well have the most targets and receptions on the roster. Is he the number one target for that out, for that team? I think it's probably not him. It's probably Dante Pettis on the outside. Woods, well, you're saying is going to finish as the best fantasy finisher at on this team, That's regardless I, of what we label yes. him as. You believe he'll be the best fantasy finisher? That's the point. Yep. Yes, 100%. and so uh, you have him at 11, Mike at 13, I've met 14, and his ADP is wide receiver 17. So we all look at him as a value right now. Let's talk and about a guy real quick regarding the rushing. 
So in 2017, no, I, just because I, I remember looking this up and being confident when I statted out rushing. Okay. Couldn't remember why. It's because in 2017, Tavon Austin had 59 rushing attempts. They use the wide receiver in the in the running game, but okay. now that's Woods. That, sure. That's why. I am confident in his rushing this year. All right, Keenan Allen at 14. I got him at nine. I can't imagine taking, personally taking uh, Woods over Keenan Allen myself. Jason at 15, Mike at 14. His average draft position, though, is the top of the third round. So uh, that could be a reason to take Robert Woods over him if you want to wait another uh, little bit ski in the draft. But Keenan Allen last year finished as the wide receiver 12. The year before, wide receiver 3. His consistency rank was 12 last year. He had 97 receptions, 1,200 yards, 6 touchdowns, 136 targets. Um if Melvin Gordon doesn't play, oh my goodness! How does this help Keenan Allen, Mike? Uh, he has had tremendous success when at least let's just look at last year. The three games he played in full, where, Mel where Melvin Gordon was not there, he went from about eight and a half targets up to eleven, seventy-five yards to a hundred, sixteen PPR points up to nearly twenty-two. It was a huge jump. He becomes. Uh, more of a fill-in for those targets. Austin Eckler certainly would fill in for the for a bit of the running back targets, but Keenan Allen's overall market share would go up if Melvin Gordon does indeed hold out. Uh, I agree with that. I mean, if he's missing games, you're going to have Keenan off to a hot start. He's clearly the number one for this offense. The reason I've got him ranked a little bit lower is simply I, I think that you know, Mike Williams is obviously coming into his own. He's being a highly drafted middle round guy who, uh, you know, last year, 11 total touchdowns. You have Hunter Henry coming back. I think around the goal line, it's not Keenan Allen's world. He's had six touchdowns the, the previous two seasons. Obviously, two years ago, that was, that was fine. He was still the wide receiver three. So Keenan Allen has that upside where if you want a guy who could be a top six wide receiver, we know he can. But I, I he has believe to get with, the volume, though. Right. He has to have the volume. And I think with the emergence of Mike Williams and Hunter Henry coming back, I worry that he he's not going to be able to get up over the six touchdowns and he'll be more of that low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two. That's that's why I've got him a little lower. All right, at number fifteen. All right, it's Amari Cooper. And uh, he's look. I'm in on I'm in on Amari Cooper this year. I I have him at ten. Jason and Mike have him at sixteen. And I'm going to tell you the secret code for Amari Cooper that's going to disrupt the way that we view him after this year is done. I think Amari Cooper will be much more consistent because I believe that the Dallas Cowboys will be a much much better offense under Kellen Moore, which is going to help stabilize Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper has already shown us. None of us would argue what he's capable of as no, a receiver. He has not. incredible top-end talent. The problem has been consistency. Dallas, under Scott Linehan, finished at 17, and then last year, 22 in points scored over the last two years. There's a lot of excitement about what Kellen Moore is going to bring to the offensive play calling. I believe that they're going to be a top-10 type of offense this year, and that's all there is to it. If you're going to move them up in terms of scoring on that offense, you know, Dak Prescott and company, you know Cooper's the number one target on that roster. And so I believe them just being a more consistent offensive team is going to help stabilize some of what Cooper does. And then he can still win you a week. Um, I am rising on Amari Cooper. Uh, I, I like a lot of what you said, Andy. Kellen Moore is the reason. I was watching some uh, film, some just fan filmed stuff from the training camp, and you could see how different the motions and the pre-snap work was. It looked more like what the Rams do than what the Cowboys have done over the uh, over the past few years, and it was exciting. It was like, oh, my goodness. Are they going to, like, spread things out, pass the ball a little bit more, get it to the, the, the running back through the air? I love that. I do think it's kind of an opposite situation from, you know, if Melvin Gordon misses time, Keenan Allen gets a bump. I think if Zeke misses time, Amari Cooper and the whole offense of the Cowboys, which usually runs through Zeke, I don't think Dak Prescott is in the uh, obviously in the Tony in the Pollard tier. season. <laughs> no, no, in you're the right. Tier you're right. Of uh, Philip Rivers and being able to still uh, you know overcome that completely. So I, I think Cooper, if Zeke happens to hold out, would take a bump. 
I know he's had consistency problems. He's just a really, really good receiver guy. He is. He's, he's a, a great, great receiver. Look at, look at his success by route and reception perception. But he just disappears. Above average at every single route outside of the dig in the comeback. He just disappears so so yes. many times. And in those games, it's he's just not – like, it's weird. He, it's not like, uh, you know, he's – uh, so great and getting open and certain games quarterbacks just go I'm not throwing to him this game well he's just a, he's it's a big place they just come in bunches with him I, w I will say he has played on a top offense before in 2016 the Raiders were seventh in points and six in yards this is rookie year right uh, but 2016 was his rookie season correct his second season or, thank you bro he is 22 years old thank you yeah, and he plays 20 22 in 2015, yeah. And in that season, he was a wide receiver three or worse in 56% of his games. So he's been on a high-powered offense, and I I don't – I have no answers. I have no answers for Amari Cooper because I, I don't argue at all how great of a wide receiver he can be is when he – when it happens to click. For me, it's just – Consistency I've, I've seen enough of right. – like. He's off your board, basically. Yeah, he's off my board, right. knowing knowing that I can be completely wrong. If you're in on Amari Cooper, I'm not here trying to talk people out of it. I'm just giving my perspective of this player will likely finish at the back of a wide receiver one, but you will be unhappy with that ride. It's going to be a very turbulent ride. I think that is such a fair place to be because I can see the route where he becomes consistent, becomes dominant this season, and everyone's yeah, he happy, but he's basically off my board, too. I'm just not... I'm not going to roll the dice. In in fact, a little uh, insight for the Foot Clan so you go, can be rooting for or against me. <laughs> but I have made a bet with uh, a, a great bet, an easy bet. This is like taking candy from a baby uh, with, with our manager. Um, it's a water bet except substitute water for milk. Oh. It is a milk bet between yes. who has a better season, Juju Smith-Schuster, or Amari Cooper. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, yeah, you're going to lose. You know, to your point, Mike, he was the wide receiver 13 on that high-powered offense season. Um, his pace with Dak Prescott was 94 receptions, 11 touchdowns, and 1,300 yards. Yeah, so the, the, it's but the you, fantasy finish versus the, yes. the up and down that you're talking. And that's – look, that's what fantasy is all about. Don't put a guy on your team just because he's going to finish with a great number if it's going to bring you pain. And that's If you're going to be sad about it, right, Brooks? I mean, you might do it because he's a cowboy. Maybe. Because you, you, you bring pain upon yourself as a cowboy fan. Oh, come on. <laughs> How about last year? But, uh, no, I, look, you, they're going to be a good offense. You're, you're, they're be a good team. Your team led by the Cowboys, your fantasy team, Brooks, did very well. You got to the championship. Sure did. <laughs> you did. All right, Stephon Diggs <laughs> at 16. Uh, average draft position of uh, wide receiver 14 right now. Um, finished last year as the wide receiver 11. <sighs> well, he here's a highlight from Stephon Diggs, and we've talked about the Minnesota offense uh, at length and about these players. Last year, it this is shocking to me, third worst yards per reception in football for Stephon Diggs. That's going to limit your upside. Well, he frequently became an outlet. It's not that he can't hit the big play. We have definitely seen that. Speaking of reception perception, he is – Kind of a, a poster boy for that. He is Matt Harmon loves Stephon Diggs. The utilization, though, he was often uh, thrown short to. And if, 102 catches for just 1,021 yards. And he, I feel the exact same way about Diggs as I, I do about Adam Thielen. I know I should believe in them. I have them projected uh, reasonably high, but it's not it's not comfortable. If he doesn't score touchdowns, which I do think he'll score more than Thielen. But if he doesn't score them, it's it's bad news bears. It's it's right. Jarvis Landry season. That's the truth. I mean, you're, that's the kind of year you're going to get from him if he's still putting up ten yards per reception. Yeah. Uh, imagine him with four or five touchdowns instead of nine like he had last year, and that would be a problem with those totals. He did score in uh, three times under the new OC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he he's a great player. Yeah. He just needs to get in the end zone. Yeah. He. I mean. I, I like Diggs. I'm fine with drafting him at where his ADP is. I would rather have Adam Thielen. I believe that the, the targets are more valuable the way that Thielen's come as the as the one versus Diggs. They'll both have big games. I also think 
Thielen is more consistent. So if they're going next to each other, then I'm taking Thielen. Brandon Cooks at 17, Cooper Cup at 18 in our wide receiver rankings. Um, you want real pain, put Brandon Cooks and Amari Cooper on your same wide receiver core. <laughs> That's kind of, I feel the same about, you know, I feel a, that way about Cooks. Like I know how good of a receiver he is because at the end of the year, he always has 1,200 yards. Um, but touchdowns, that's something that's, you know, week to week with Brandon Cooks, and his involvement isn't as integral, you know, from a, a PPR standpoint as Robert Woods is. So I have him the highest at 13. Jason, Mike, you have him at 17. Talk to me about what you see for Brandon Cooks this year. Brandon Cooks, uh, had a he had a very uh, Adam Thielen-esque end to the year because through those first 11 games, not counting the one where he was knocked out. I mean, he was absolutely sensational, going over 100 yards five times. And he he is the field stretcher for this team. And then it it really fell apart there at the end. If you had him on your fantasy team, you are upset with Brandon Cooks. I know there the the fantasy burns aren't as public and prevalent with him, but I have as one who had him on my championship level team it was rough it you thought you could count on Brandon Cooks to be at least a two and he wasn't giving you that at the end of the season so knowing that he can disappear like that it, that's why I have him ranked where he is Cooks and Woods right now are exactly tied in ADP they're both the 406 that's impossible <laughs> I know <laughs> no, I know on, on and average Cooper Cups at 502 which is only four picks behind yeah, I mean, I, I mean the the reality four picks behind from the four hundred six to the five hundred two. Uh, yeah, because Galladay, Godwin, and Green. Sorry, wide four receivers. wide receivers. Okay. Sorry, four wide receivers. I was like, wow. math was not adding up because I know in my in a you, lot of best balls that I've been doing, I've been grabbing Robert Woods and Cooper Cup in separate rounds from one another. I don't mind that at all. I mean, I, you know, I was talking to someone recently. There are issues with the offensive line for the Rams, right? They're replacing two guys with very inexperienced right the, the, I think it's the center and the left guard have very little experience that's an issue um it, there's reasons to believe what you saw at the end uh of the year you know the Super Bowl coverage there are reasons to say the Rams could take a step back this year Gurley's health all of that sometimes there are coaches where you just go no I just trust them and I know it's a small sample with McVay but that's where I am completely with McVeigh, with Belichick. Okay, he's 42 years old with Brady. None of this stuff matters. They're going to be good. The Patriots are going to be good. I learned my lesson. That With the Rams, I think they're going to be one of the top five offenses for sure, oh, and I, I want the pieces. You, say, you maybe go beginning of the end. For, beginning of the end for, for the Rams. Sean McVeigh. Calling it now. 20 years from now, <laughs> he's done. Um, so, you know, I, I like all three pieces. The piece I like the least is Brandon Cooks simply because he's a little bit more boom and bust and he's going around ahead where Woods is. I prefer the more consistent option, but I like all three wide receivers. You, They're all going to be You're going to have me. weeks that you wish you had one or the other. 100%. I mean, Cooks is great. He's had 1,000 yards in three straight seasons for three different teams. He's picking the right quarterbacks, though. The, the right offensive system. Three Hall right. of Famers, right? Uh, two, oh, two. Jared <laughs> Garf already? Jared Garf. Cooper, I, Cooper Cup is at 18. I love Cooper Cup. Wide receiver two through the first five weeks, but has yes. the ACL tear. And he was 7.8 yards after the catch, the best of the qualified wide receivers in that metric. In five full games, he had six touchdowns. He is he, he's the touchdown man for Sean McVay's offense. In 2017, Cooper Cup's rookie year, he had 23 red zone targets. Cup is the man, and uh, it's... Okay, so let me give you a number. Cooper Eight, Cup... Six, seven, five, three... <laughs> I'm, we're not calling Jenny. Okay. 10.5 touchdowns. Can Cooper Cup... Or if, if I'm giving you a buy or sell... Oh, buy or sell? 10.5? 10, 10, 10. 10.5. So. Uh, I'll sell it, yeah. Okay. That's too much. I would sell as well. Yeah. If you if you put that number at eight, I would have been – I'd buy that. All right. And, look, we talked about the impact of Zeke and Gordon. Why not talk about the impact of a potentially limited goal line the, – the best player in football over the last handful of years at scoring touchdowns has been Todd Gurley. If Gurley's limited, what, it, what happens in the red zone 
for the Rams and Cooper Cup and Gerald Everett and company? I don't think it. I I I don't want to. I don't want to say this too outlandishly. The re, but I, I mean I don't think it matters. I I know that sounds crazy, but I mean we saw it already. We saw Gurley miss games. Eh. No, we we saw him completely out of the lineup. No, I, the, I know, but not a lot of them. I mean, not a season's worth. Sure, not a season's worth. I just don't want to presume. I don't want to presume that that is the be all end all. That Todd Gurley is now replaceable because C.J. Anderson had a couple of good games. I mean, but okay, so you missed the last two games of the season. Then you have the entire run of the playoffs where he was back, but you know, not being utilized. So I feel like you know you're you're talking about uh, uh, enough games where you could see does did this derail the offense? But if you look at how many points they were putting up. Through those games, I mean, well, I'm they not were worried about 40, hold on, 36. Hold on. We're not talking on the same plane here. I have nothing. This has nothing to do score? with whether their offense is slowed down or not. I'm asking how they score. Cooper Cup touchdowns. Cooper <laughs> Cup. <laughs> okay, sure. Field goals. You're right. Touchdowns and field goals and extra points. Okay. PATs. Now, now my all my problems are solved. Yeah. But no, Cooper Cup was not Safeties. active in any of those games that C.J. Anderson was in or the playoff run. All I'm saying is, is if, if Gurley isn't there to punch it in, does this add to the possibility that Cooper Cup is a 12 touchdown, a 10 to 12 guy because they simply don't have it to hand off to Gurley? It could, and I've brought up my, my Jared Goff. Yeah, your love infatuation? Well, just the red zone numbers where uh, – uh, last year, only three quarterbacks had 100 targets in the red zone. Pass attempts. Yes, thank you. Pass attempts in the red zone. Mahomes was over 100. Luck was over 100, and so was Goff. Mahomes and Luck both threw over 30 touchdowns in the red zone, and Jared Goff was down at 23. I mean, that's the Cooper Cup area. If yeah. you believe their offense doesn't change regardless of Gurley, then Goff will probably lead the league in red zone pass attempts. Very possible. It's Yeah, it's very possible. All right, two more guys. Tyler... Lockett. Hot Lockett. And Kenny Galladay. Let's start with Tyler Lockett. Right now being drafted. Look, his his draft price is not really inflated. Despite a, a, a really solid year, 10 touchdowns, finished as the wide receiver 15, being drafted as the wide receiver 22. Mike, you have him ranked right there, wide receiver 22. Are you going to have I did it. Tyler Lockett on... Any of your some, fantasy rosters? Some. I will not go all in, He's though. on all my best ball teams. Okay, I, that's, I, that's, a, that's, <laughs> a fair, that's a fair stance. But in season long, no, I will hedge with Tyler Lockett. The things he did last year do not compute with with statistical evidence. You, uh, Everything was the same in terms of his targets. However, he jumped up over 350 yards. His touchdown rate went absolutely bananas. The guy had more yards after catch than air yards, which for a deep threat, <laughs> let me impossible. tell you, it is, it is literally impossible. When I looked it up, I I quadruple checked this thing. And when you quadruple checked it and then you slacked it to us, I was like, that's not right. Yes. You're wrong. That's yes. just it, impossible. It doesn't make sense. But what does make sense is Tyler Lockett seeing a sizable increase in his volume in the targets because Doug Baldwin is gone. Tyler Lockett is the de facto number one on this team, so we'll see if that utilization when we, actually becomes the reality, but that's what you have to project. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally understand that the way Tyler Lockett did it last year is not repeatable. He's not going to catch a touchdown on the same rate of passes. 57 total receptions. But <laughs> what I do know, is, uh, Mike and I, when we were in uh, Los Angeles for the live show, we had a night where in our hotel lobby – Yes. Pretty much just by oh, ourselves, man. just having an hour-long argument over over Russell Wilson, whether or not he uh, is going to be a quarterback one. In fact, we made a bet over it. And um, what we know is that Tyler Locke is a great wide receiver. In general, yes. he's very good. He's always been off the charts on reception perception, hasn't always played 16. What <laughs> Russell we, Wilson has a perfect passer rating when he targets him. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's last year he did, that's yes. That's pretty great. Um <laughs> <laughs> You've got – he is the number one for Russell Wilson and is a great wide receiver. I'm trusting those things. I don't care about uh, the the specific analytics of touchdown rate. It might come a different way. But I know that the Seahawks are going to win games. They're going to win it on the back of Russell Wilson. Maybe in the Pacific Northwest there's just an anomaly where things shouldn't happen but they do. 
Yeah. Because Russell Wilson's not supposed to be that efficient. Tyler Lockett's not supposed to be that efficient. And for goodness well, sakes, been for Brian years. Schottenheimer's not supposed to be able to just it's run not, the ball down yes. your throat. He's not supposed to win games. And he does. So maybe, maybe things just – maybe production and being a good team, no matter what pathway it changes year to year, it just happens in Seattle. I, I feel like Tyler Lockett right now, if he's being drafted as the 22nd wide receiver – you're getting him at his floor. I, I I don't see him falling out of wide receiver two into the 30s. It you does know what seem I mean? hard like, to believe. As the number one for Russell Wilson. So I am f I am 100% fine with drafting Tyler Lockett at his ADP. Well, let me ask this question because a lot has been made about Juju. He likes questions. And, yes, we've, we learned that on the live show. A lot has been made about Juju. Okay, now you're the number one guy. You're, co you're drawing number one coverage. How is that argument – how does that not hold for Tyler Lockett? I think it's yeah. different in the sense that the, – the, A player the, who's never seen more than 71 targets. No, it's, it's different in the way that the offenses are run. You've got a team that is run first clearly, uh, scramble uh, out the pocket with Russell Wilson, plays are breaking down. That's different than just the, the 150, 160, 70 target – clear first read option in well, an Doug offense. Doug Baldwin wasn't really there last year. He was he was there more than people remember. I chose not to see him. That's that's fine, but Doug Wal Doug Baldwin appeared in 13 games. Doug Walrus. <laughs> Walrus is on the brain. He appeared in 13 games. Uh, like he was around. No, he appeared. He appeared. That's what I said. Yes, I didn't see him. Appeared. And occasionally, <laughs> great. from the mist, he appeared. He'd put his feet on the field, a snap would come, he'd be like, I'm out of here. Yeah, I mean, That well, counts as a game. Give me my check. None of us are looking at I mean, look at what Juju did. Target totals, reception totals. Nobody's looking at Tyler Lockett like he can take that mantle. He's just that ever-present threat for a big play week to sure. week. You could make a pretty strong case for, you know, he's a very Deshaun Jackson-like end result stat line at the end of the year in his career. I mean, he's going to catch. d never put it, other than one season in Philly that went hog wild. He's always a 57, 67 reception cap type of guy. You're talking about whether he moves into the slot, gets peppered with targets. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think it's more likely that Rashad Penny and Chris Carson get more targets out of the backfield than it is, you know, Tyler Lockett becomes a PPR guy because the way they used Lockett last year was literally to NFL perfection. Yes. Right? So why change the way you used him when your pass rating is 158, throwing oh, him the ball? They won't change it. I'm just saying that. I'm going to bet on the side of, of statistics that said that that what he did was not repeatable. And I mean, Tyler Lockett, up to that point, has been a, about, about as useless as a fantasy wide receiver can be. Not on a per-game basis. We, okay, okay, but still, finish of his highest finish to that point was wide receiver 44 his rookie season. Yeah, his, his rookie season, but I mean... It, and he he plays how how many games I mean you those those numbers sound really bad but they're not actually like in fantasy when you had the options to start him in sensible games he wasn't he, he has not been bad I'm just letting this continue because I feel like I'm getting a, a look at the lobby argument oh with the Russell lobby argument. it was so fun okay let's, <laughs> no I mean we can keep it going about Lockett where <laughs> oh we're going to smooth routes. Well, I looked at the clock, and I very fair. felt like we're probably going to have a show tomorrow and the day after that as well and the day after that. Stay tuned for tomorrow. More, More lock, it. lock it time. Kenny Galladay comes in at number 20, the last one we'll talk about on today's show. Um, I don't know if I've – and this is – look, every fantasy football circle is different. I don't think I've seen a player that had more hype become less hype than Kenny Galladay from year to year. Uh Last year, he finished at wide receiver 21. We all have him ranked at 21, 22, 21. We've all talked a lot about Marvin Jones because he's so undervalued in the offense. Um, we've also talked uh, at length about this carry-on player, uh, carry-on Johnson. Yes. Uh, Is that how you say that? I don't know. And I'm certainly not playing the song again. <laughs> this is Kenny's time. But, you, you know, you've talked a lot, Jason, about Daryl Bevel and the rushing offense and the, the workhorse of carry-on. So if this, if this offense, and last year, by the way, Matthew Stafford, second-worst quarterback in football in red zone passer rating. We, we hear he had uh, some 
fractures in his back. That is the what I would have said too. I have also um, heard that's <clears throat> very painful. Mm-hmm. If I had that pass rating, I would contend that I had fractures in my back to save face. Look, this is a make or break year for Matthew Stafford. They might not throw as much. You get Marvin Jones back. Here's Kenny Galladay, who had a thousand yards, had five touchdowns. I don't think that pass rating stays that low. I think they 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 score more often. So what are we? What's the real ceiling for Kenny Galladay? I'd love to the, know what the ceiling uh, <laughs> is for Kenny Galladay for this team. I think the ceiling and why he's being drafted so high is that his ceiling is like a top ten wide receiver. You have the first two years where he came in, he looked great, Mike. You loved him. He yeah, was wide great receiver. on film, great out of uh, great college production. Comes in, looks great. Now he goes into year two, gets a thousand yards in fifteen games. Coming into year three with maybe a healthier Stafford, a better offense, I think that the ceiling does exist for him to really break out and be a the the dominant one like he hasn't been. Right now we're looking at Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay as the 1A, 1B. I think that that is more likely the outcome, that there is a, a, a 1A, 1B, or at least a 1 and a close 2 here. But the world does exist. I think the ceiling does exist where – Galladay is the dominant one in targets, and they run the offense through that. Uh, Does he – you know, him and Boyd are back-to-back -back in our rankings. And you can see all the rankings, the fantasyfootballers.com, all the draft rankings. Um, have you been taking Kenny Gall – like, I've taken Tyler Boyd in a number of drafts at that value. I've never – I haven't drafted Kenny Galladay because I don't feel like I'm getting the value on him that you are at other receivers – are you more comfortable with Galladay over Boyd if it's if no draft cost is considered? Mm, man, if no draft cost is considered, I would go Galladay. I'd rather go for the upside. Right. What's difficult for Kenny Galladay, he had he had his chance to be the number one guy. Marvin Jones missed half the year, and the the splits of Kenny Galladay here's points per game in PPR with Marvin Jones, thirteen point seven seven points. Games without Marvin Jones, 13.87 PPR oh, points. Oh, he I mean, went up. I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not what you're hoping or expecting to see when a player of his caliber has his has his shot. And that's why I think all three of us, even though you know I talk about what the ceiling could be, I think all three of us don't expect that to be materialized this no. year. The better value in the draft is Boyd, is Marvin uh, – Jones. Jones. Jones, thank you. Marvin Martian. Lewis was in my mind. <laughs> Marvin Lewis. Don't draft wrong. Marvin Lewis. Definitely not. Whatever you do. All right, that is going to wrap up today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. A reminder, check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. And we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Yesterday, Allen Robinson signed Bears jersey, $39. What? <laughs> yeah, man. And we had some people at the live show bring uh, some of their signed merch. It was awesome. Uh, which is pretty sweet. So pristineauction.com, use the registration code BALLERS. And we'll be back tomorrow with the top 10 running backs. Oh, running backs. It's going to be fun. We will see you next time, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.